Hey everyone, Clint here from Oaken Iron Outdoors. I have three mobile systems behind me, the climber, the stand-in sticks, and the saddle and sticks. And today what I wanna do is I wanna go over why I utilize each system throughout the entire bow hunting season. They each have their own place, and I wouldn't get rid of actually any of them. But maybe you're a new bow hunter and you're just getting into this mobile hunting game. And for you, you wanna figure out which system, mobile hunting system, is going to work for you for your upcoming bow hunting season, all right? So let's go over that right now. So the first one I'm gonna talk about right now is the climber. And the climber, for me, its primary purpose for myself as a mobile hunter is to carry cargo. Essentially, I call it the semi-truck of the mobile hunting game because I can put so much on here and carry it in the woods, all right? And the other thing is it has that very thin profile and I have my backpack straps on the back here. Not all climbers are created equal, all right? So what I really like about the Lone Wolf is the narrow profile, all right? How narrow this is. And what that does for me is it keeps this close to my back. So when I carry all of my cargo, okay, on the back side of this, it still doesn't feel as heavy. Now, there are some manufacturers out there um, that create great climbers, okay? But as they walk through the woods, those climbers stick out way back here. And as you know, anything that gets further away from your midline, especially on your back, going backwards, is going to cause it to feel a lot heavier, okay? It can be the same weight, actually it can even be lighter. But if it goes way out here, it's gonna create that pull on you going back and it's gonna feel a lot heavier than it is, all right? Let's load this bad boy up and I'm gonna show you what this guy looks like with all of my gear on there, including my camera gear and why I utilize the climber to carry all of my cargo. So if you look closely, I have a heavier hunting coat, my heater bodysuit that still has a little bit of the blaze orange on it uh, from rifle season from last year. Um, I have my backpack uh, utilized for my filming gear and then I have uh, rattle rack that I just threw on there just to show you how much I can actually carry with it. So obviously this is not for early season, uh, but here in Wisconsin, mid season, we get some of those days that get down to 10, 15 degrees, and then late season especially, because I can carry all of this gear, especially when I'm hunting public land. My primary purpose uh, for the climber is for cold weather hunts, and then I can sit all day if I want, um, get that heater body suit. Um, I'm not associated with heater body suit in any way. Um, but that heater body suit, it, it's kept me on stand all day uh, in negative temps and high winds. So um, yeah, this is my system for cold weather gear and public land. Another pro is affordability. Now, even brand new, the climbing systems for the most part are usually less expensive than sticks and stands and sticks and saddle, assuming that you're going with high-end sticks, okay? And to me, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think it pays to go into these mobile systems like a stand and stick, stand and saddle without getting high-end lightweight sticks. It just kind of defeats the purpose of it, all right? So that's why I'm including that into those particular systems. Now, once again, starting out, you're a young hunter just getting into bow hunting or maybe you're a little older hunting just getting into bow hunting. For the most part, this is going to be your least expensive option. Um, and not only that, because these have been around so long, you can easily go on Facebook Marketplace, you can go on Craigslist, and you can find these particular mobile climbers uh, fairly inexpensive out there, um, at least inexpensive in the bow hunting world. So from a starting standpoint, the climber is going to save you the most money, at least starting out. Another pro is investment value. Now, this particular stand, all cast aluminum, um, it looks the way it did 25 years ago when I bought it brand new. Now, when I bought it brand new, I wanna say I spent $225 brand new 25 years ago, and now I wanna say they're about 325 to 375, somewhere in there, don't quote me uh, on that. But um, this stand will last me another 25 more years, and even if I sold this stand, I would get all my money back out of it and then some. Let's go over some cons now. One con that I can think of is that you just can't go up into any tree that you'd like. Um, you know, and for me, there are particular trees that I have to be in, that I want to be in, and I'm not going to sacrifice that component to utilize this particular stand. 
Now, I usually know where I'm going into woods-wise, and I will bring the appropriate system with me. Um, a lot of times when I do my scouting, I actually will scout the tree out. I'll find the tree ahead of time, and then I'll actually take a picture of it. I'll place it onto my Onyx app, and then that way, if I forget or whatever it might be that I want to go to this particular stand in the woods, I'll just pop it up and I'll actually show myself pointing to what tree I want to be set up in. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, I could bring the climber for this particular um, setup, all right? Uh, but once again, you just can't set up in, in, in any tree. It usually has to be smooth. Maybe you can remove a few branches. The other thing too is sometimes those knots, um, you get some of those bigger knots on a tree and you have to shimmy around that. Uh, that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, uh, but yeah. Uh, this is select to only so many uh, styles or different styles of trees out there. So once again, just to recap, the climber for me is going to be utilized as a cargo hauler. Now let's head on over to the stand and sticks and look at the pros and cons of that particular system. Stand and stick or hang on stand and sticks. What is the primary purpose? Why do I utilize this system here? This primary system is when I am hunting essentially evergreens and usually in public land in Northern Wisconsin. One of the things I really like to do is find those really bushy evergreens and be able to tuck this particular hang on right into those evergreens. I've never been busted actually by a deer uh, into those, when you're tucked away in those evergreens, there's something about having those little side walls. And a lot of times you can kind of see through the branches of the tamaracks or the, the pine, whatever it might be. You can see those deer coming. And I think they also, uh, those branches create shadows and you get kind of lost in those dark shadows. So for me, the primary purpose is when I hunt evergreens. And then this particular stand too is kind of a do it all stand, all right? Um, you know, if you're a person and you're getting started in the mobile hunting game and you want something that can do a little bit of everything and you don't want to purchase all the other different mobile hunting systems, this would be the route that I would go with, all right? Because you can do everything with this. It's just that it does have a few limitations, all right? Now for me, I don't one stick. I know a lot of you folks do out there. Um, I like to keep stuff simple and easy. So I do have three more of these sticks, so four total. They just get put on the back here, or actually on the other side when I'm, I'm carrying the tree stand through the woods. Um, so that adds weight. So this itself weighs probably about as much as my climber does. And now you're adding these sticks to it, all right? And then you got to add your gear to it. A lot of times these sticks, if they're not flat on there, depending upon how you stack your sticks, it can be a little trickier getting all of your extra gear on there. For instance, like if I want to carry the heater bodysuit, my backpack, other little goodies that go on the back. Um, but it can be done and it's not really that difficult, all right? So folks, I'm sitting right now in the Hang On uh, Novix Echo Stand, and I'll tell you right now, this is just kind of getting me into that feeling of wanting to be in the woods tonight bow hunting. Uh, but as we speak right now, this stand is super stable, super quiet, um, comfortable, comfortable enough at least. And the thing of it is, I'm utilizing this stand if I'm doing my all day sits, all right? Or another thing that I like to do on private land spots is I'll take the stand up, this is another pro, is I will put it up, hunt out of it that afternoon, evening hunt. I will leave it already set up, okay? And then I'll come back that next morning early and I'll hunt out of it again. Now, I am a big fan of virgin sits. I don't like sitting in the same tree more than once, but I will consider from an evening through into a morning and then already having that stand set up so I don't have to monkey around in the dark with it and make noise, especially if I'm setting up close to a bedding area. Uh, that's key for me, all right? So there's another pro utilizing uh, a particular hang-on stand. One little con I wanna talk about is if you are a self-filmer. Now, if you're not a self-filmer, uh, this probably is not going to pertain to you, but just in case you are, or if you're ever looking to get into it. When you're sitting into a hang-on stand or even a climber, okay, for the most part, if you're a right-handed shooter, you like to have everything off to your left side, all right? For me, that just makes it too hard to try to get that screen viewer around, okay? Essentially, the camera, in a lot of cases, is behind me, or I'll, I've stood forward in the past and then bring the camera around from the back side, and that's worked as well. But the trouble is, when you go from the back side, this screen viewer is on the opposite side of the camera. So a lot of times, it's blocked, and you're not seeing what you want to see and once you become pulled back 
you know, and you're trying to look at that screen viewer on the opposite side of the camera, you have to pull your head, set it down. And I just don't like that extra movement. And you know, in a lot of cases, this is all happening very, very fast, all right? So what I like to do, if I'm on a hang on stand or climber, is I like to put that camera off to my weak side, okay? And then turn my body completely, pull back, and then shoot from there. Now, the only thing is, is that kind of limits you a little bit from a hang on stand perspective to always have those deer coming from that side. Because if you bow hunted long enough, you know they come from any direction and sometimes even the directions you totally don't expect, all right? For me, that's where the tree saddle reigns supreme, especially if you're self filmer, all right? So let's go over that right now. So my primary purpose of the tree saddle is for self-filming and that's the goal of oak and iron outdoors i say one of the goals is to get my deer essentially on camera and this allows that perfectly so once again viewer on my strong side i can put my bow right here that's on my strong side and boom i'm ready to go very little movement makes it much easier and then i can move that camera in any direction and essentially have it on my strong side now the cons of the tree saddle all right evergreens once again sticks and stands best for that this is very hard to get into a lot of thick evergreens that i like to be in and then the other thing is cold weather gear i love my heater body suit for those really extreme cold temps and it's just impossible to get into the heater body suit and then being in this tree saddle so once again that's what the climber essentially is for or even stick and stand as well all right then the last con i would like to say is that this system becomes quite expensive. Um, through the platform, the saddle, the ropes, the tethers, and then the sticks, um, it's the most expensive out of all of the three, depending upon which route you go. Now, I know there's some more inexpensive saddles. The one thing I would say about saddle hunting is if you get into saddle hunting, um, and I'm always looking at value, but saddle hunting, don't chintz out, all right? go and get the best system saddle system you can afford especially if you're going to gauge how you're going to like or dislike saddle hunting because there's a lot of manufacturers out there who just throw something out there and then people are complaining about hip pinch or they're complaining that the sticks don't have enough standoff and it might be the sticks are too heavy whatever it might be go out and get the best system that you can afford if you're starting out in saddle hunting, it does make a big difference because comfort wearing these saddles are king. Um, this particular saddle uh, was a custom made saddle uh, for myself from Overwatch Outdoors. Um, the craftsmanship is unbelievable, it's outstanding. If you're gonna get into saddle hunting, the one thing I would say is don't chintz out. Start with the best that you can afford, all right? Hey folks, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't bring out my very first mobile hunting stand and that is the Loggy Bayou. This particular stand was very popular in the 80s and early to mid 90s and this stand was kind of the prime of its time. Um, it was lightweight, it only weighed nine pounds. Uh, this seat actually would flip down, you'd put your feet into the bungee cord here and then you had to be upper body strong and there was no handpiece. You would just take your arms around the tree, hold tight, and then shimmy your legs up and then keep doing that. And uh, yeah, if you weren't upper body strong by the end of fall, uh, you were upper body strong. And you know what? I was 17 years old when um, I purchased this stand. I worked on a dairy farm down the road, saved my pennies that particular summer and bought this stand and then um, shot a lot of nice bucks out of it and had a lot of great memories from this Loggy Bio tree stand. Matter of fact, I put this stand in a rummage sale years ago and uh, had listed for $40 and I had some guy offer me $30 for it and I said no. And looking back at it, I am so glad I did not sell this particular stand just because it has such a, a keepsake for myself. Hopefully this video has helped you decide on what mobile system is going to work best for you this fall, all right? If you folks don't mind, hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. I got some more bow hunting how-to videos coming your way and then as soon as the season starts I'm going to be showcasing my hunts and how my hunts are going this fall and then try to get that big buck on video. Until next time Clint from Oak and Iron Outdoors.